morning. Happy Monday, everybody. Welcome to another session with me, Emma G, um, as we are doing Real Talk with the phenomenal uh, Princess Best, uh, the hip hop mama, and the incredibly talented and uh, overly comedic, and I say overly because I, I'm, you know, I'm a very serious person, I hate laughing, um, Tommy Taylor Jr. How are you guys doing? What's that? We good. <laughs> That's real talking. That's what we're going to do tonight. Real, real talk. Real talk. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for those who don't know who you are, do you guys want to just give a brief sort of overview of what your what your name is, where you're from, what you do, and, um, you know, blah. Sure. <laughs> That's cool. So, well, what's happening? Um, my name is the Hip Hop Mama Princess Best, and as always, I speak because I seek to heal, empower, amplify, activate, and liberate the voices of women and girls so that we can have better communities and a better world. I am um, I'm a, uh, I'm a mama, first and foremost. <laughs> I am a performer. I am a, um, a hip-hop artist, um, a hip-hop artist who uses hip-hop and theater to speak that good word. Um, so I'm somewhere in between, uh, a cross between a Harriet Tubman, Ida B, Lauren Hill, and uh, a Nikki, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so, um, let's see, and I, uh, I use, yeah, I use hip hop theater as a way to be able to spread me messages, particularly uh, messages of wellness for, uh, for women and girls so that it spreads out to our entire communities. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm a, I'm a writer, I'm an actress, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a director, all things that have to do with the uh, vocal performing arts that um, ultimately lead to like self, um, self um, reflection, self um, autonomy, you know what I mean? Just, and, um, and, uh, and, and really, and really just healing. So that's what, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I, I'm, that's what I do. And by day I'm a program facilitator. And so I do a uh, cross between like mental health, arts therapy, arts education. Um, and so that fuses into, um, in, into my work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, you making money. <laughs> ah, let me say I'm making money. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Tommy. All right, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tommy Taylor Jr. Uh, I'm an actor, comedian, international ladies man. Uh, I'm out here, well, I'm a, not, okay, well, I'm a domestic, I got like one girl on this block. Um, anyway, it's limited confines, but uh, yeah, I've been on uh, HBO. Um, I do a monthly show called Almost Ladies Night. When we're out of lockdown, uh, it's one of the hottest comedy shows in the country. Uh, do a lot of interactive stuff bringing different comedians from all over, all, you know, from all over the world uh, to the show. Um, and yeah, just to make people laugh, have fun. Uh, and um, it's probably a lot of other stuff too, but I guess we'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, just, I have one question. How do you, how do you, like who decides that you're an international ladies man? What does that consist of? <laughs> um, it was something I just decided uh, <laughs> a couple minutes ago, actually. Um, I say, <laughs> Like it, it's more so like Southeast is my international realm where I have a couple of ladies, but um, I'm thinking big and if I dream it, I will achieve it. So I'm yeah. hoping that in the future, whenever the borders open back up, I will have some women or a woman outside yeah. of uh, <laughs> outside of your home. Yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking because like my my family cultural background is from international, you know, like is very international being Norwegian, Iranian, Fijian, American, New Zealand. So like, does that make me an international man's woman? Does that? Okay, right. Can I claim that? Just keep doing that, both of y'all. Just do this, and you can be <laughs> I, I heard, so I, <laughs> I had a dance off with a, a dancer friend of mine um, a few months back and she was saying, if you, if you wiggle your hips, it means that you're all about, you know, the sensuality. If you wiggle your shoulders, it's a power move. So like, I'm, I'm the, the powerful man's woman. I don't know. Can you be a man's woman? Like, how do, ladies, man, what, what's the, what's the reverse? Right. 
I, I have questions. Because it, it would be like a man's woman, but that, uh, that don't, that don't come off as slick as ladies' man. No. A lady pimp? <laughs> you know what? A lady pimp. A lady pimp. <laughs> There's a Beyonce song that I heard recently. Uh, a diva is a female version of a hustler. So I'm like, I'll, I'll go with that. There we go. Yeah. Just heard yeah. that song? <laughs> <laughs> Are you know how long that song went out? I just heard sorry, it. I'm, I'm behind the game. I'm sorry. I, um, I, I, I grew up listening to metal and uh, rock music. So, <laughs> you know. I'm 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 becoming cool. One day, one day I'll be cool. I feel like a lady pimp has to like listen to at least about three Beyonce albums. That's probably yeah. No. <laughs> I I need to up my game. I need to up my game. Anyway. So board, like the hot sauce in your bag, swag, all that stuff. I no. do have hot sauce. I do have hot sauce you in your bag. On your way. <laughs> no, not in my bag. Ah, uh, yeah. I'll work on this. So this was this was a thing that I, I'd never learned about hot sauce until I came to to DC. Like every <laughs> other country I've been to, you don't hot sauce isn't a thing. Um, <laughs> sorry. We're learning. We're learning. Anyways, <laughs> so we've got uh, Rachel's online. We've got Jenny's watching. Jason's here. Jane is here, and Michael is here. Um, Let's get into it. How are things going for you guys during uh, this? I mean, it's been what seven weeks now that we've been in quarantine. Has it been seven weeks? Damn. I don't know. It's, it's, I, I've been on quarantine for seven weeks. Right. I, you know, you can't even keep up with the days. Yeah, I call, I call everything Monday. It's like Monday number one, Monday two, Monday three. <laughs> Somebody asked me you how know, weekend was. I mean, you mean. Monday six and seven. <laughs> right, right, right. And you, but you're still gigging online though, right? Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, I guess, that, I mean, like, like, that's a big question, right? Like in terms of like, how you know, how people been doing, what's up substantial, what's up meter, what's up music, gift, um, look. So I, mean, I think that's a, it's like a really big deal. Cause it's like, yo, when people say like, yo, how you doing during this time? It's like, ah, uh, shit, <laughs> um, uh, crazy and eating like shit and creating and mad and frustrated and um happy and trying to create shit and you know what i'm saying and working and wondering how long this shit gonna last and wondering when um i'll be able to go outside and shake my ass or you know what i mean you know mm -hmm. and just you know breathe or like you know what i'm saying whatever like so i think every i think i'm doing I'm doing every emotion that there is that could be done. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? What 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 I'm not is all the way together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so what's what's been the biggest what's been the biggest struggle for you thus far? Um the uh biggest struggle for me, I uh shit, I think um one just um I, as a mom, I think, uh, as a mom, I think it is, you know, struggling with not try, trying not to feel guilty about, you know, like, you know, it's, you know, usually throughout the day, if your kids are at school, you know, even though you might be at work, you know, you get a little bit of a, you get a little bit of a break, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and now this is a testament to say, how much do you actually freaking love your kids I mean not so much that but like you know what I'm saying like you know because you know you know it's a 24 7 thing so I think um I think the hardest thing for me has been um has been that and trying to keep my hands out the damn refrigerator um <laughs> and, you know and not just keep my hands out the refrigerator but 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 I don't follow that shit up with exercise right. so you know so like so that's that's really why you know, and um, and then I think you know, and you know, I had the emergency move, so I think that that was um, you know, and I think um, if you're not in a household with people that you can quarantine with, that should have that should have drive you, you know, drive you nutballs. Mm -hmm. So um, so I think that um, that's been the the you know. It's, it's like a catch-22, though. It's been the hardest thing to deal with, but at the same time, when you are artist, you kind of like, okay, well, 
great because when you go through shit, then you create stuff. You know yes. what I mean? So it's kind of like, damn, you don't want to go through it. But at the same time, you gotta make like, most of it. this makes for some wonderful music. Yeah, for sure. What about you, Tommy? Um, actually, I'll be honest with you. I, like, I've been having a pretty, a pretty good time. Um, um, I'm like, I, people don't realize that I'm actually naturally introverted. I guess so I like, I like my alone time. So like, this is like heaven. I'm just here by myself, <laughs> ignore people. <laughs> actually, I don't know. It, it makes you feel like you have to respond to people when they text you. That you're like, because like, I'm, I'm, I am here by myself. Uh, they go, no. <laughs> <laughs> they go, no, I wasn't busy. I'm like, I was doing stuff. Uh, I, I was in the yard, but um, no, it's, actually, I'm just like pretty positive about everything um i've uh, been i've been like doing other things like as as a you know comedian artist you want to like read and do different researches and stuff like that so i've been doing that studying random stuff i was studying like um anatomy relearning parts of the body i don't know just i've been trying to uh, take advantage of uh, <laughs> Apple free time did some yard work um i watched netflix about three times <laughs> I went through it all and rewound and then watched it again and then did it one more time just because I had the time to do it. Uh, I'm learning useful skills. I know how to um, build a tent. I know how to do that now. I, I learned how Sorry, to you, you learned how to build a tent? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm learning all kinds of practical skills. I, I, I shoot a bow and arrow. Um, I learned how to whip, make some clothes and whittle. I don't even know how to spell whittle, but I can whittle. What is whittling? Huh? What is, what is whittling? Whittling, it's it's a uh, it's an old skill. Now, I'm yeah, gonna, I'm gonna do that. I can I can uh, knit stuff. Um, <laughs> so I know how to knit two pieces of yarn together, but now I'm gonna try to make some clothes out of that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we we out here. We we gaining skills in in the COVID. It's yeah, yeah. it's one of the things that I've I've really um, it's been I fascinating seeing how people. Ladies, need a hair braided. I could just come over here. I'm gonna braid your hair. Uh, for a low charge, twenty-five dollars. I think that's all you need. I'm gonna braid your hair. I can like uh, do a hot press. I don't know. Oh. I'm trying to do a hot press on one oh, side. Wait, like, wait. But can you do? Can you do goddess faux locks? Because you know I need a touch up. You know. I, what I'm I, I can shave them off too. I can do a shave. I can like. I got some oils. I got some uh, essential oils, so I can like make sure oh, moisturize. Make sure that the locks are moist and sustaining that moisture. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> right that's amazing um that that's yeah. <laughs> it's, it's fascinating for me um watching people uh on on like the gram and on facebook and they're talking about how bored they are mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so um I, I don't know i just but to, to tommy's point like this I, I feel like i don't know maybe it's because we're creatives but being able to um being able to kind of channel all of this we're at home energy into, you know, I'm writing music, I'm learning how to set up my own recording studio at my house. I'm, you know, like there's all these, I haven't learned how to whittle yet. Mm -hmm. but, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we'll get there. We'll get, <laughs> that's cool. It is easy to get bored though. Like I do get a little bored sometimes. And, uh, but, um, yeah, I think like I think it helps to be creative because then you start doing like creative stuff. I start mixing foods together that don't belong that I wouldn't put together normally, just making new sandwiches. Dare <laughs> <laughs> I ask? You just get creative. You just start making making stuff up. That's what you got to do. Right. Right. I think I mean and 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 yeah, and I mean boredom. I mean I re I read something one time where they talked about being bored and um because I know again just going back to like being a parent. Like, you know, they were saying like the new age of parents are so deathly afraid for their kids to be bored. You know what I'm saying? Wherein, wherein, when we were younger, if we got bored, well, now, so now this goes against the pandemic, but when we were bored, we went the fuck outside. You know what mm. I'm saying? Like, or, like, you know, like the boredom, then boredom, boredom breeds creativity, right? Like boredom, boredom breeds creativity because at some point, um, cause, cause at some point, um, the, like, you know, you don't stay in one emotion forever. You know what I'm saying? So like, if you're bored, you're going to be bored for how long? Bored until you decide to do something else. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Bored until you are like, yo, I can't take this no more. I got to do something else. 
You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, so, so I think that, yeah, I think you can be, you, I think, I think where more so than people being bored, they are, they don't like to be controlled with their time. Like, ooh, like, ooh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm messing up my phone. I'm, I'm uh, broadcasting from Instagram too. But I'm saying, like, so I think when they say they're bored, they're bored, not, uh, they're bored that, that they are having to be in a, like, in a, in a space. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Right? You know what I'm saying? And I think, um, um, that, 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 you know, because some people who love being in the house, like, uh, my, my homegirl was like, she like having a house to herself. I'm like, see, that's the thing. You got some people, they, they don't like, like eat, they quarantine, but they ain't got a house for themselves. You know what I'm saying? Like, they ain't got no corner that they can go to that's yeah. quiet, that where, where they can be like, so I, you know what I'm saying? So she, imagine a person who got, look, my grandma had, grandma and granddad had 13 kids. I couldn't imagine being in a house with 13 other damn people during the quarantine. You know what I'm saying? Like you, I mean, You've got one child, right? I have okay. one. One. How many kids do you have? And that's just one, and one is enough. It, in right. the sense of this, right? <laughs> and how many kids do you have, Tommy? Uh, just myself. <laughs> oh, really? I thought you had children. Oh, oh my bad. Yeah. Sorry. There's a lot of lies out here. So it was <laughs> lies and rumors. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know you just it's because you're your child your, your boyish good looks I don't know. <laughs> um, and, and, and a ladies man, you know, usually you know international ladies men have kids. They just might not know about them, right? Okay. <laughs> I, I plead the fifth. I plead the FIF. Um, just FYI, uh, we've got Sai Focard on on here. We've got Jared Gifford Jones is here. Michael Field, Jennifer Kilborn, Ostrander. Mindy, my cousin from, well, actually, she's my auntie from Pennsylvania, Joseph, Cam, and Michael Murphy's <laughs> here all the way from New Zealand. Um, Gift said that he saw Tommy at improv with Tony Rock. Mm -hmm. Apparently, apparently you're funny. I mean, that's, that's the rumor. Sometimes. <laughs> How are you finding the humor in this kind of situation? Because you're doing your shows online now. How are you finding things to laugh about during COVID? Um, I think it's like too many things to laugh about. Like it, it's, it's, it's hard, uh, cause I adapted the show for like the internet. So it's not necessarily like stand up. Cause like, with stand up comedy, you, you need an audience. Like you need that like back and forth. Uh, that's kind mm -hmm. of the purity of it. And, um, and thanks for coming to see me at, at the improv or going to see Tony, but you saw me anyway. We appreciate that. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. But, like it's it's hard because I don't have like an actual stage to get on. It's like usually I'm out like every night, <clears throat> different shows, doing like a couple shows a night. And you get to like just get stuff off your chest, like workout material, um, talk about myself. But here I'm just by myself, cracking jokes to myself. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, oh, I'm so funny. That that's me on the daily. Just if I. <laughs> <laughs> you, need, you need that feedback, that validation, like that. Okay, okay this was funny. Um, so I, I am missing that, but I mean, it's a lot of so many topics that are going on. Like you just be you know, in the house, like by yourself, figuring out stuff. Um, See, so it, it's tough. I think it's tough for comedians to um, in in this age. And I think we were talking a little bit before. I think for like artists, you can like even doing a show, you don't really need an audience to really pay attention. Right? They can like mm -hmm. be at like, I, like for a musician or a singer, they can like, people can talk and do different yeah. things while you're performing. They'd be like, oh, that was really good. But they still can like vibe to it and like dance, yeah. like talk to people. But for comedy, you have to, you need like a captive audience in a way. So um, this, this uh, I know it's, it's been tough on a lot, of, a lot of comedians, I think. So you got yeah. to avenues to kind of like unleash your- um, If y'all joining in, this is Real Talk with Imogene. Yeah. Yeah. So um, one of the questions we have here is, um, are you both writing much during this period? Are you taking advantage of the time to like, you know, get get some material together for when life goes back to normal? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think when, um, I think it's like anything, like re regardless of like, you know, pandemic or not, you gotta have something to write about. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I think that whether we were in this or not, I think forcing any type of writing um, will be bad for you. And but you know, and you know, you'll botch it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I, I 
think for me, the uh, I'm I'm writing I'm writing in pieces. Um, I do have an idea for an album concept that just kind of came to me that I was like, oh shit, like I want to do this. Um, but I um, but I'm writing it in pieces. I think that what I'm taking notice of the most is who I actually truly am in this silence. You know what I'm saying? So in this silence and okay. in this time, like. Like I'm looking at, I'm looking at how I'm truly responding to people and to things and really, really, I guess it's like uh, peeling back the layers to understanding like who you, you know what I'm saying, to who I really am. So then I'm like, oh, I'm like this. So I need to write about that. So like, there's a lot of stuff that's, there's a lot of stuff that's bubbling to the surface that I think that if anything, when you inside four walls, that stuff starts to come up, you know what I'm saying? So the things that you might naturally be able to, the things that you might naturally be able to put off to the side or Mm. not necessarily think about, but you know what I'm saying? It doesn't necessarily come up because you're moving throughout your day. Now it's like, you know, you can almost review your whole life every single day. You have Mm. time, Mm. you know what I mean? And so Mm. when you have time, and you have time and you're inside then you're like you're reflecting on you know now you can see your habits truly you know what i'm saying now you can see your flaws truly because it's not a lot distracting you from it you know (laughs) so i found that i'm i'm a lot more sensitive than i thought i was (laughs) sorry what was that tommy i said unless you have 13 people in your house then you might not be able to get that (laughs) right (laughs) So how are you dealing with things, Tony? Um, good. Actually, like, you know, one of my, like, um, measures is I try to, like, write every day. I think, um, especially for a comedian, like, you need to, like, consistently practice that and, like, just get thoughts out, ideas. So I'm, I'm trying to stay with that and um, and then touch on some different things. And But, yeah, it's like there's so many different things going on, like I was saying. Um, it's kind of hard to just, like, narrow it down. Like, I'm, I'm getting a lot of just, like, watching people like watching people's mm-hmm. reactions to uh, the COVID, but like, it's, it's kind of like human nature. We're never content. I think and that's kind of like one of the big things I get from it. Cause like, you know, when people are working, like, man, I wish I had a three day weekend. I can't wait to, and now you got like a whole seven, seven week weekend. <laughs> and people complaining, like what y'all complaining about? Um, I know besides the financial stuff, I mean, um, I don't know, like part of, I guess part of this is my uh, practice in regular, I guess normal life is, I don't know if I'm successful all the time, but just to be like, trying to be not complacent, but content, like in every stage, like enjoy mm-hmm. that journey. And I think this is also a great time for people to enjoy the journey of like where you're at. Cause I think like, you know, friends, like you don't have a job, um, you know, you have a bunch of free time, right? To do different things. Then when you get like a job, you're bogged down with work and you're like, man, I wish I had that free time again to do different mm-hmm. things, learn language, do, do anything, like spend time with your kids, like, Shoot, shoot your shots on Instagram, like whatever you're trying to do. Like, uh, I mean, take advantage of this time in the moment. And um, yeah, but it's so funny how like, it's not even like the seven weeks, but like the, the first three days people were complaining mm-hmm. <laughs> about being in the house. But then like, you know, other times like people like are wishing they were. So uh, yeah, I think it's um, a lot of stuff out there. Uh, then you got the Trump. Like I wish somebody would support me just like half as much as they support Trump. <laughs> Like imagine if you had one person to support you with half the fervency as these Trump supporters, like we'll be great. Oh like, my god! Like, so these people, act, it was so funny. I saw the news. They were t- uh, people were out there protesting the, um, the quarantine, and they're talking about it's it's a hoax, it's fake news, and this and that. But they had masks on. Like nigga, you gonna believe what you're saying or not? <laughs> like, how you gonna be protesting with masks and gloves and we got a whole? Uh, <laughs> a hey whole, yo, you so like, come on, dog. Like you're not even convincing. <laughs> Hey, but did you hear about the uh, woman in North Carolina who well, they were like trying to, they were uh, they were protesting and saying they wanted to reopen North Carolina. And um, after they protested, the woman who organized the joint ended up having Corona. <laughs> no. Yes. My friend just told me about that today. I was like, yo, that's wild. You know what I'm saying? What's up, Will? Like, no, that, that, I was like, that's wild. You out there protesting, like, open it up, open it up. <laughs> like, that, that can't be, you know what I'm saying? I, so I am like, totally convinced that I, I had COVID in January. 1,000% convinced. I, like, I legit pulled an abdominal muscle from coughing so much. 
Mm. Was my dry cough. Like, I was you favorite. Might have, you might have had whooping cough. That old no, no, not the whooping cough. No, it wasn't. With, I, I, I know whooping, whooping cough. It wasn't that. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, things are. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> But you're well, right, we should be supporting each other as much as Trump support his, support him. <laughs> I, I just need one person to support me that hard. If I had one person like the risk, these people, they, they say they'd rather die than to stay at home. Like, nigga, what kind, what kind of sense does that even make? <laughs> I would stay at home before I die. Like, it was me personally, I believe in some things very strongly, but I, still, I would still stay at home before I die. Like, that's just, that's just my experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my gosh, yes. Yes, 1,000%. Um, so like, as you're navigating through all of this, um, have you like, cause you both have relatively large audiences, um, Mr. HBO over here and the Hip Hop Mama I met at the uh, DC Music Forum. Was it, no, yeah, was it? Yeah, the DC Music yeah. Summit. Uh -huh. Summit, mm -hmm. Summit, that's the one I'm looking for. Um, and your audience is huge as well. How, like, how are they showing up for you guys on that same note? Like, are they... Showing love? Are they, you know, people tuning in for your lives? Are they? What are, what's what's going on here? Um. Yeah. I mean, I guess and no. I I haven't been showing up. I mean, like, even though people tend to think I'm online a lot, but I don't think I'm online as much as I probably could be or should be, especially not in a um. I guess in a structured way, like, like I was just saying this morning, how, um, like, I know I need to be doing. Um, I want to be doing more, but at the same time, I think people are just completely completely inundated with everybody's coming out with a new online fucking program like mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because everybody's like oh okay because we gotta move stuff online and it's like i get it because we're we're trying to like adapt but i also think the shit is gonna be oversaturated because like how much shit are you gonna be able to like tune into online like after a while you know um so I definitely think I have of support. I think coming from the standpoint of like, okay, being a program facilitated by day, I think it is really hard to corral young people, you know what I'm saying? Young people onto stuff, unless, uh, um, I mean, unless it's like musically driven, you know what I'm saying? What's up, Pink Lady? Um, unless it's like musically driven or like dance driven or something like that, you know, something that they were already into like on TikTok or whatever anyway, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, I think that if I mean if I'm if I'm talking about something interesting or you know raw truth, I think people do join in right before. Matter of fact, right before uh, Corona and COVID happened, right, um, I had just did like a whole week called it was like heal a whole week that where I was doing like uh, going in digging in on the healing of people on a day to day basis for that full week, and we were supposed to be doing culminating it into an event. Um, mm -hmm. But we had, of course, can't, you know, can't, uh, postponing the event. But um, I think people are showing up. Um, I think people are showing up. I, I think I haven't been as active, but I, I, I'm um, as things are picking up. I think I, I, I think I will be. I think I will do more. But I also just, um, I just honor that, like where whatever space, however you can show up with whatever energy you can show up with right now is enough because. Um, I think we do. I mean, I, speaking for myself, I know I do too much. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it ain't, you know, so for me, it ain't no race. It's, it's like, okay, you know, um, there's some structured things that I want to do. And if you weren't already, which are most, uh, most artists aren't, no, but we aren't, you know, uh, most of us aren't coming savvy with online platform plans mm -hmm. and ready to launch and rock it. Mm -hmm. So it's a thing. Yeah. <laughs> However you making it, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I, I think I do. I think I do have support. And if I put out a call to say I'm doing something, I think people do show up, you know? That's cool. How are you finding it, Tommy? Um, I kind of agree. Like, I think at a certain, <clears throat> it's kind of getting a little oversaturated, you know, with everybody doing like the Instagram shows and Zoom shows, things like that. But um, I think for your core, you know, I think it's, you know, kind of like looking at it from a business standpoint, like for your core audience, it's good. Then you might get, you know, I think it's good for all of us as, as artists to really take advantage of uh, this time to, you know, at least gain a couple followers, you know, do it doesn't have to be like huge, but to do something incremental, you know, mm -hmm. and, and also, um, you know, think a little more strategic about like, uh, actually, well, my, my background is business also, um, engineering. Uh, so 
Okay. <laughs> as well, but you know, I think a lot of times as artists, we don't necessarily think about those things. And like, for instance, I, I'm, I help um, a local business here. One of my so after uh, usually after most of my shows, we go to um, go out and party. But we, before we do that, or after, we go to this uh, pizza place, uh, Angel Cousina Angelina's, uh, right okay. there, like on, on the U Street or whatever. And uh, and so like I started an Instagram page for her, for instance, and like. Um, before the whole COVID thing, but it actually kind of helped out because, you know, then she got like news media coverage and, uh, and different things. But it seemed like a lot of business at Capo's, one of my other favorite places, they have a little speakeasy, uh, mm-hmm. thing right there, a little hidden thing. And um, I had to do these Fauci pouches, little pouches of uh, like alcohol. Um, okay. That's pretty Fauci cool. pouches? Yeah, Fauci pouches. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, does does so- Fauci know about this? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's pretty cool to see like businesses innovate, right? And like, for instance, like the um, she like really, uh, you know, uh, took capitalize on like the large late night crowds, like will be coming in after the clubs and stuff like that. And now all that's gone gone away. So it's like businesses have to innovate, like restaurants have to innovate. How can I still reach my audiences? So they got on like the Grubhub of Ubers and stuff, uh, Uber Eats, all that kind of stuff, and um, mm-hmm. they've been like doing different things in the menu, adding new offerings and stuff like that. So it's pretty cool to see like even like a um like cab or a club like doing like to go drinks and stuff like that or like in creating little niches in there and so as mm-hmm. artists like we're creating like how can we also differentiate ourselves and like create niches in the midst of something we may not regularly do mm-hmm. and I, even with the business i'm saying like this would be cool like, even when things go back to normal like y'all should still do this so do these little uh things so um yeah, I think it's it's pretty cool to like think about stuff like that and to really put yourself in the mind of like um, I think it pushes you know some people are already kind of taking the lead on like the online stuff or on the internet. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. That's how kind of old the whole internet thing. Uh, <laughs> With all your twenty one years of experience of life, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, I think it, it's just cool. Like I think it, it's a good challenge to like to see people like innovate and see how they can approach things differently than they normally would, which, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it's a course of life, I guess. So. So what's, what's the one thing that you're hoping to take, like that you've developed personally, both of you that you've developed during or are developing through this coronavirus pandemic that you want to take, like, that you think would carry on, you're going to carry on after the fact. Hmm. <clears throat> Um, I think uh, I think that the thing that um, is most coming up for me is mm-hmm. uh, making making some type of music that reaches um, that reaches women in transition of like going through like separation and divorce or like overextended but you know like uh, over uh, extended motherhood. Um, things mm-hmm. of that nature, right? You know, just I've always been focused on writing the writing the rhymes or the stories that um, that uh, that are necessary, but people don't necessarily find an angle on how to like say it or talk about it. So mm-hmm. I think I'm focused on I'm, I think I'm focused on um, telling interesting stories, like tap, you know, just pushing my pen to tap, tell tell the interesting stories in rhyme that are coming up for me in the four walls. Um, that I want to take the, because again, you know, the things that are, the things that are, we are experiencing during this time, really, it's not that it's new. It's just that we just have more time to deal. Right. You know, we just have more time to deal with it. So I think that I want to make the music that, um, shoot, I want to talk about things. I want to talk about like, shit, like I want to talk about coronavirus babies, not, not babies that have coronavirus, but like the babies that are being made, like, because people are in the house and they, all they doing is having sex, like, you know what I'm saying? Somebody getting pregnant. Right. No babies will be made. <laughs> yeah, huh? You know what I'm saying? You you know what I'm saying? That a year from now, we're going to be saying, oh, you was a Rona baby. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? Right. We're we going to be saying that somebody was like, anybody talking about that, but like, that's real. Like, their are babies. I hope baby. you're right. I hope you're right because I know I know that domestic violence has definitely increased during coronavirus. Well, and that's true. And there, was that's a true. Baby, there was a baby <laughs> named uh, Cor- Cora. Cora Ona or something like that. No, Cora Ona. no, I can't. That's got to be a joke. That's no, gotta... it's true. Like, look it up. There was like a big, and there was another weird name. Like, I think like COVID or something. Oh. Something, but they were doing like all the anyway. I why? Why would you? 
Why would you ever? <laughs> why would you ever? I can see Cora, but not Cora Ona. Nah, don't don't try. Like <laughs> that's crazy. But maybe the middle name is Ona. I don't know. Oh, yeah, that's, that's but her. I definitely feel like that. Uh, like as far as like yeah, like domestic violence. Uh, different people who um who were trying to escape like their abusers, different stuff like that. Now having to be in a space with them. So I definitely think we should write. You know, what I'm saying stuff like that should carry on. Um. And but I but like also too like for the people who was like who you know who lost their jobs or who was scared or who um had to move in with other people or like you know what I'm saying or they really like they never had to deal with eating oodles and noodles and now for real they got to you know what I mean mm. or um or or like I said or somebody like me who on one end it's like if you see me like I'm a I'm a loving ass mom. But like I'm, I'm, I i do not wig out on my daughter plenty of times in this whole, you know what I'm saying? Not that you know what I mean. And so, like talking about that and the super fucking guilt, like you know what I'm saying? Like, oh my god, like is this Corona? You know what I'm saying? Like, is this Corona? Or is this how I really am? It's just the press, you know what I mean? And yeah. really dealing, and really dealing with those issues. I think that that's the thing, you know what I'm saying? That's what I mean about like this thing is bringing out who we. You, for me, who, you know, more of just who, you know what I'm saying, more of who I am. And um, I think that's really yeah. important though. Like we need to, I don't know, come, coming from a country like New Zealand where we spend a lot of time on our spiritual health and emotional health um, to then living in the capital of America, um, which is a very capitalist country. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I feel like, you know, the balance has been shifted so much more towards um, money and drive and status and blah and blah and blah that we forget, you know, the core of things like, oh, this is what it feels like to, to be upset or this is what it feels like to, you know, have intense love in my, in my feeling, you know, in, in my heart or this is what it feels like to to be lonely because mm -hmm. it's so easy to get lost in work right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i don't know I, I get lost in music i'm like oh i'm about to feel things let me just write a real uh, write a song about it real quick and <laughs> and then like i don't have to deal with it now i can just sing about it and like people can feel something and then i can just move on with my life mm -hmm. i don't know if you're the same way tommy with your with your jokes like do you ever sort of take like, I don't know, do you deal with your stuff by making jokes about it? Um, yeah, I guess, I mean, it, it comes from all different directions. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know I was kind of thinking about what you were just saying, the, uh, you know, kind of creating out of this moment. I think one thing for me is like just being more, uh, you know, I think for everybody being more appreciative of like the, the moments you have. Um, I think with, with there's one thing that really like struck to me. Uh, I was just thinking about recently is like we've you have the same amount of time every day. Like even when you got we're out in like working and stuff like that, it's like but what are you doing with your time? Because mm -hmm. um, like you can still be at home all day and then like they like hey, well the time go. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like you didn't do you didn't accomplish anything or you can accomplish so much, you know. But it's really um, it's irrespective of like the, uh, the your environment, but it's really like what you make out of it. Like you know, when we go back to normal or the new normal, or whatever, you know, really making that most of, um, you know, uh, whether it's like not beating your daughter <laughs> or beating her, um, you know, loving each other, like how you how we treat people, um, interacting, uh, you know, making the most of relationships. Um, I think it's pretty cool. And I don't know when I I guess for, for the comedy part, uh, I'm, I'm kind of torn. Like I don't want to hear any more about Corona. <laughs> Oh, so, thanks. Yeah. yeah, I want to like create like outside of this space and like, you know, not talk about it all. But then is well, everyone's so ingrained in such a, um, I think with comedy, it's such you find these pieces that like you make stuff relatable. And like it, this is a moment we all can relate to because we're all living it and experiencing it. Mm -hmm. So um, kind of like creating material which, you know, which we can relate on, but doesn't necessarily touch on it. It's kind of like, I guess, my, um, you know, because I'm sick of it. All you hear is Corona like 24/7 on the news. Right. I think that's the. I think I agree with you, Tommy. I think that that's the thing. I think you. I, I think that once somebody brought up something the other day 
where it was like, I think some students, um, something had happened at, I don't know if it was at Blue or it was at one of the high schools and it was just talking about, um, uh, it was it was talking about somebody getting shot right and I'm like, yeah, ever since, ever since uh, Corona hit, you ain't heard shit about people getting shot, killed, like, like other things aren't going on besides Corona. You know? Well, because nobody's in school. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, it's like, you know, like I was like literally like legit, like I wanted to write about that because around, um, around my uh, my daughter's father's way, like two times, you know what I'm saying? Gun, like we heard gunshots outside. And, I, and, and and of course I died, I died like niggas is out here shooting when it's fucking corrupt. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you got time to shoot? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But thinking about, I'm like, life doesn't stop. Like, life doesn't stop for people, whatever the whatever the beef was. I mean, I don't know what it was. I don't know what the reason for the gunshots were. Like, I have no idea. But just assuming, like, whatever beef was happening, I'm like, you know, you ain't hearing about Black Lives Matter protests. You, you, I mean, you don't, you know, it's 24-7, 24-7 talk about Corona. And it's like, people... Yes, this is a major thing, but people have things going on outside of that that we need to honor. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's like, yes, we need to honor that nothing is normal. But at the same time that people had shit going on before this. And what are those things? Because I think those are the things that we need to. I think those are the things that we need to focus on writing about writing material about because I. I, I only think, like, to me, the COVID and Corona is just a symptom of things that we needed to deal with anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, okay, now just, I think it's just the taking the time to, you know, taking the time to deal with. But I agree with you, Tommy. I'm like, that's why I'm turning on the TV because I'm like, I mean, look, fill in the blank. Somebody died. Somebody died today. You know, you, I mean, I, I hate to be like that. It's not even like I'm trying to be insensitive, but it's like, yeah, and people... And people dying in other ways too that we are not, you know, that we ain't acknowledging because we on the twenty four hour Corona thing. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, you look like you're you you <laughs> you processing. <laughs> no, I feel like I got cool. <laughs> oh, I'm always processing. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, okay, so you mentioned before about the new normal. Um, what do you think that new normal is going to look like? What do you hope it's going to look like? And I, and I only say that because I've had numerous conversations with people um, around, you know, like this COVID is the symptom almost of a, a world that has been so engrossed in um in values and and ideas and principles that just weren't built to last right and so we're seeing a shift um from living a very me 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 kind of lifestyle at least in america um to very much more around community helping each other out you know uh, all those who are against socialism were like hey when's Trump gonna give me give me my stimulus check which is totally socialism, just FYI. Um, like, what, what, what does that new normal look like for, for you? Well, the stimulus check is also your money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> your tax money. So you're just getting part of it back. Like, I don't, uh, yeah. I think it does help people look at things differently, hopefully. Um, it also shows how people still look at things completely the same. Uh, which I'm just so shocked. I see a lot of, not to hash on, hash on too much, but like the Trump supporters, for instance, they just, um, at some point you have to admit the dude's doing a bad job. <laughs> and when people are so, and I, I and I can understand if you like him or whatever, but he's doing a lot of stuff that's kind of messed up in this, in this, uh, especially in this whole situation. I think a lot of lives could have been saved uh, with a little bit better leadership on his behalf. Um, you know, a lot of different things. So I think that's, that's one uh, takeaway. Um, I don't know, I think, prepare for the, you know, unexpected type of thing. I, it could, uh, you know, theoretically, it could drag out a long time. It could, we could go back to like normal, normal, like soon, um, or it could not be. Uh, so I think kind of being uh, yeah, flexible in, in that uh, sense is, is helpful. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> mama, I was like, she's about to break in somebody's house right now. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, All I can see is your cell phone, like, picking up. <laughs> no, I was trying to get yeah, dark. <laughs> no, I was trying to move my phone because my phone was um, losing charge. I had to put it, plug it to the charger. That's hilarious, though. Uh, <laughs> put a mask on, broke in somebody's house. <laughs> Say, Live on Facebook. <laughs> Listen, do, doing the most right now. Doing the hey, most. I, I'm also surprised more people aren't ro- aren't uh, stealing right now. So like everybody right. has mask on, like face coverings. I was like, this right. is a perfect time to like to steal stuff. I would think. I, um, I think I think people, but you know what? The karma would be the karma would be if you did rob somebody. Oh, if you did rob somebody, then you would probably end up with rob. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's I, I, it, it's funny. I was um, chatting to a friend of mine the other day from New Zealand. Um, you know, back 10 years ago or whatever, people used to talk about like Muslims, you couldn't trust Muslims because their face were being, faces are covered all the time, right? And I'm like, now all of you, we're all looking like we're ninjas, you know, like Mortal Kombat characters and we're being encouraged to do so, but, you know, better <laughs> safety. <laughs> <laughs> so much judgment, so much judgment. Negativity. It's horrible. It's horrible. Are you, are you good, princess? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm good. I had to, yes, I had to readjust. Sorry. <laughs> we just see people's ankles and everything. <laughs> you can see ankles? <laughs> Sorry. I was getting, oh, show over there. All right. That's it, girl. <laughs> hey, this is real life. Real life. Real life. I think, I think that's part of it is like I've had to rearrange my office somewhat so that I could like do all of my live streams with my blank wall behind me because you know my you guys don't want to see what my office really looks like. There's guitars everywhere. There's like boxes and music and just it's messy. It's gross. And I think you know that's that's part of it is all these uh, public figures are having to show their homes. They're real like. We're real people, y'all. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Tommy's just kicking back on his couch, being a real human being. <laughs> He's not just an HBO star. He's a real boy. <laughs> I am, ladies. Cheers, cheers to that. <laughs> I love yes. it. So, as we wrap up today, is there anything that you uh, that we want people to know or feel or? Um, that you know, a message that you have for the world during this, and how you know life is for you, and how you want to move forward. Um, she, message. She didn't mm. get some more. We need to send. If y'all are out there listening, send uh, <laughs> hip hop mama a power cord or a <laughs> battery extender, something, so she can get through her days. <laughs> That's all I want. Can we? Can we? Is there but one? Is there but one out there? <laughs> Hallelujah! Can we touch and agree? <laughs> Send them your Amazon, and we're gonna make sure they get taken care of. <laughs> you said you saw that, right? <laughs> I love it. I think. Um, I think the message. I mean, I, I think the message is clear. Definitely. I mean, I, you know, keep laughter. You know, find something to, you know, find something to laugh about and to be and to be grateful about. I mean, for real, um, because um, that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's what you have. One of my favorite quotes is if you have a garden and a library, you have all you need. So if you got some if you got some food, if you got some physical food and you got some spiritual food or something to read, you know, something to read or somebody to talk to then you really do, um, that is the thing that kind of processes and makes life push on. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that um, uh, don't take, um, I, I won't say don't take yourself too seriously, but um, but I would say um, like, you know what I'm saying? Like it to me is, you know, the best art, the best things are created uh, in times of people's uh, challenge. It's, it's just, you know what I'm saying? It, it's what it is. You know what I'm saying? I think that people should have as much sex as possible, um, you know, and I think because I think it's a good time for that. And love unless you're underage. Unless you're underage. Unless, unless you're under 80. Oh, yes. right. Oh, right. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, you know, I'm, I'm assuming we are like 18 and over, but right, right. If you're underage, definitely wait. Um, but, 
but in general, I think that it's a time to be loving, loving on people. You know what I'm saying? And um, and if no other time, like really, you know what I'm saying? Like, get, like not giving of yourself, but you know, give yourself what you need. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, pleasure wise, you know, in all, you know, in always taking, like I took a, I took a sensual bath last night. It was absolutely fabulous. It was fantastic. Right. And, um, and I needed, I mean, and I need that in general, but I was so, I was so kind to myself with everything that I put in it to make myself feel, um, you know, in, in, in a certain way. And I, and I treated myself that way. And of course it was something that I was like, you know, need this over time. So I think that I, and I would just what, say, what, what is essential bath? Essential bath? Oh, tell me. Oh, tell me. What essential bath is. Can you explain to me? Oh, honey. You host it almost ladies night. You don't know what essential bath is? Really? <laughs> It's got all types of oils, you know what I'm saying? It's okay. got, we had mango and shea, and um, we had some lavender and Epsom salts. Um, it comes complete with a cocktail um, with uh, a couple of candles, um, incense, and even lingerie. It was great. It was great. I'm nice yourself, girl. A part of, a part of love is the best love. <laughs> all day, all day. <laughs> yep. So I awesome. definitely feel like that, you know what I'm saying? That don't take no, don't take no shorts on that. And um, and it's okay to have an, an, an array of emotions every single day. That's, yeah, I, I totally wanna, um, and I wanna say the Maori word, totoko. Um, I totally wanna pre- like repeat that. Um, I agree with that. That's, it's really important to, honor every emotion and feeling that you have during this period mm-hmm, really mm-hmm. important um, and joey jenkins just by the way i uh, just uh responded to you princess uh, by saying uh hashtag preach so <laughs> thank you very much uh mm-hmm. tommy yes i may have to, what, what? I may have to uh, look into the central bath and uh, <laughs> <with some> oils <laughs> but, uh, get it right <laughs> Uh, I think, you know, um, from, from my uh, vantage point, you know, really um, kind of Harvard always said, like, you know, take a chance to, like, find something to smile about, uh, whether <coughs> or not, like, smile every day, um, and really just enjoy, uh, I, I say this all the time anyway, just enjoy the moment, you know, really mm-hmm. enjoy the moments that we're afforded right now, because, like, at some point, these moments won't exist, and we're going to go to something else, so, like, make the most of the moments that we have, even if it's not exactly what you want, but um, there are things in this moment that you won't be able to have in any other moment. So mm-hmm. uh, really be able to appreciate that. Uh, I would say all the ladies, y'all can find me on um, Tinder and Bumble uh, in these moments. If y'all are, are you serious? You're on Tinder and Bumble during COVID? Dangerous, bro. Okay, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot your shot, 2020. We're shooting all shots. Uh, <laughs> just wearing masks during the whole the whole day, you know. Okay. We we could do a virtual central bath. I, I don't know. We we're gonna find a way. Oh, yes, I'm way. here for it. Where there's will, there is a way. Amen. Amen. Uh, I love it. <laughs> so speaking of that, um, besides Tinder and Bumble, um, <laughs> where can people find you, Tommy? Um, oh, everything, social media, Tommy Taylor Jr., uh, Instagram, Facebook, Tommy Taylor Jr., my website, uh, pretty much there is Cash App, Tommy Taylor Jr., if you want to send me a blessing, a financial blessing, I'll take that. Uh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, man, we're, we're out here, and uh, yeah, come follow me, we're going to do some, I got some funny stuff popping up, we're going to put stuff online, and uh, we do a weekly show as well, almost ladies night, so come get some laughs, enjoy Enjoy your uh, quarantine with with me, and um, yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And princess, yeah. And so you can find me on Instagram at Princess Best Speaks, like the best ever. Um, at Princess Best Speaks with an S on the end. Um, you can find me on uh, Facebook at um, uh, the Hip Hop Mama, a Princess Best. Oh, Princess Best Speaks, uh, the Hip Hop Mama. Um, Mama is an M O M M A. M O M M A. 
No, mom, not, mom, yeah. mom. the American mama, not the not the New Zealand or the British, just to clarify. Exactly, exactly. mama. <laughs> Right. Um, so you can find me, um, find me there. Um, YouTube, uh, Princess Best Speaks, um, and uh, SoundCloud. All of those, um, all of those are under the Hip Hop Mama, Princess Best, or Princess uh, Princess Best Speaks. Um, and if you, and same thing, shoot, shoot. If you want to, if you want to cash at me, uh, then you know um, I will be. Um, I, if you follow me um, at Princess Best Speaks, we're, I'm going to be doing a special um, brunch for uh, Mother's Day. So stay tuned for the word um, word on that. And if you want more information on just, um, you know, collaborating, healing work, all of that stuff, you can hit me up at princessbestspeaks at gmail.com. Uh, awesome. Awesome. Hey, thank you guys so much for, for your time tonight. Thank you for spreading your laughter and empowerment to um, people all over the world. Um, yeah, like I said, like you guys said, please follow these guys. They're amazing. Um, super positive, super kind super loving um and that's what we all need right now is a lot of kindness a lot of love a lot of community um this is when the champions show up you know this is when we rise up and change this new normal into something that is beneficial for everybody so until next time friends peace love and sensual baths well, yeah <laughs> i love it oh thank you thank you so much y'all be blessed